Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer, Nomad. It's a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information. Welcome back to another episode of the Interlake Sports Now. I'm Josh Dugan, and it has been an action-packed time in the world of sports. The MLB's underway, NBA, NHL playoffs, and the NFL draft. So a lot of noise going on, but with all that being said, we still got plenty of action to cover right here in Northwest Montana. So let's get right into it. Speaking of that NFL draft, Kalispell native Patrick O'Connell, Might not have heard his name called in the draft, but made some noise afterwards by signing an undrafted free agent deal with the Northwest Zone Seattle Seahawks. Very exciting stuff. He was among a few other players who landed with the Seahawks from the state of Montana as far as college football goes. A couple Bobcats guys, we're going to dive into that. And a few other Grizz found homes in the NFL potentially as far as training camp or free agent deals. So let's get in all that fun NFL draft stuff, and then we'll get in all the prep sports action. Like I said, still a jam-packed time in the Northwest Montana sports scene. All right. So starting with O'Connell, the standout linebacker from the Montana Grizzlies, former Glacier High product, signed a free agent contract with the Seattle Seahawks on Saturday. The Kalispell native had a banner career for the Grizz, finishing with 242 tackles, 28.5 sacks, and 45 tackles for loss in 40 games from 2019 to 2022. So, heck of a career. One of those guys that you had a feeling he was going to find a home at the next level. It was just a matter of time, whether it was the draft or a free agent deal. And just throwing it out there, a lot of the times they say if you're going to be a late-round pick, sometimes it can be better to land with a contender like the Seahawks in a what do you know region you're familiar with for O'Connell sometimes you know being a seventh round pick's nice for the resume but that undrafted free agent right scenario right spot that goes a long way in professional football so might have just found a great home and a team who has a history of producing great talent on the defensive side of the ball so overall awesome stuff from the Glacier High product he had a a lot of good showing leading up to the NFL draft he was at the Hula Bowl and then he was had a strong pro day at the University of Montana, so well-deserved for O'Connell. Congratulations. As for some other action with the Seahawks involved in the state of Montana, a little Northwest theme here. Seahawks kind of might have been scouting heavy up this way. So Seahawks last year, 9-8, and eight, Geno Smith, they were a strong team. They brought in not just O'Connell, but Montana State Safety Ty Okada, who had a huge pro day, and Bobcat cornerback James Campbell, who also had a strong pro day. Okada, he ran a... He ran a 4-4-4, and his vertical jump was 40.5 inches. So just one of those guys, rare kind of athleticism, safety position. Nowadays, kind of the hybrid kind of guy. See him as the kind of guy who could maybe play a little bit of linebacker, play some special teams, get his foot in the door early. Similar to O'Connell, it's easy to catch on when you have that versatility. Special teams is going to be an option for those kind of guys. Along with Campbell, who we did mention, Former Bobcat defensive back, he turned heads with a 4-4-4 as well for the 40 time and a 37-inch vertical. So overall, just a great athlete. And some more Bobcat news, Bobcat linebacker and Bozeman high product, Callahan O'Reilly had a 37.5-inch vertical, put up 24 reps on the bench at Pro Day, and that led to a mini camp invite from the Chicago Bears I'm going to just have to throw it in there. I'm a Bears fan, and there's no doubt, as a guy who's a tackling machine like O'Reilly, that's a place to go to to develop. If you can latch on, that's a good place to go. And what do you know? Playing football in Bozeman your whole life, you're going to be ready for those Chicago winners, the Windy, windy City. So I think that's a great fit for O'Reilly to have a chance to make a name for himself and catch on with an NFL team. Love to see it. So all that news was from Saturday. Then Sunday we had a little more exciting news out of Grizz Camp with defensive back Justin Ford landing an invite to camp at the Baltimore Ravens. Ford, an NFL talent, no doubt about it. There were some rebelings. Maybe his 40 time wasn't as great as people were expecting, and that could have had something to do with it. But one of those guys, they never threw his way. You get him in an NFL training camp with those resources, that coaching, and they're going to see right off the bat that technique is there. I like his chances to latch on. And like I said about some of the guys we already mentioned, great landing place for a defensive product to go to the Ravens, who historically have been one of the best teams in the last 20 to 30 years of developing defensive talent and the defensive backfield especially. So great fit for Ford. We'll see how it goes, but you like his chances to 
latch on there, and we're definitely rooting for him here from the Interlake Sports now. So, last up, one former, one more former Grizz found an NFL home heading into next season. This no- news broke on Monday with the return man and wide receiver Malik Flowers signing with the New Orleans Saints. Flowers, one of those guys, again, had a great pro day, great 40 speed, set records as an FCS kick returner, and... At the NFL level, you have that kind of speed. They're going to find a place for you on the field, whether it's in the return game, special teams, or as a playmaker, all kinds of different offensive schemes nowadays. you got to love that fit. The Saints also last year found success with a big sky kick returner. So it might have been following a theme there a little bit. So to recap, you have the former Glacier High product and Grizz great Patrick O'Connell heading to the Seahawks along with James Campbell and Ty Okada, those are all on undrafted free agent deals. Then you have former Grizz record-setting return man, Malik Flowers, Saints bound on a free agent deal as well. And then you have Justin Ford and Callahan O'Reilly, Ford of the Grizz, O'Reilly of the Bobcats, two guys who had great college football careers in Montana, both getting invites to training camp, O'Reilly with the Bears and Ford with the Ravens. So A lot of fun stuff right there. I know that was a lot to break down, but overall it was such a great year of college football in Montana. There was so much talent. It felt like it was pretty much North Dakota State, South Dakota State, and the two Montana schools were arguably as loaded with talent as you could get. Yes, maybe Montana didn't finish with the record they wanted as far as the Grizz go, but the talent was undeniable on that team on both sides of the ball, especially the defensive side and special teams, and it reflects in the draft. So, awesome stuff. You love to see that and rooting for all those guys to have an opportunity to prove themselves at the next level. We saw Troy Anderson in recent years make a name for himself. So, there's a lot of great football talent in this state playing college football. They're going to get their chance. So, we're going to move on to some prep sports action and we will jump back into the college ranks to wrap things up. So, a little bit of history, you could say, was made last week with Cat Dog Baseball going down for the first time between Whitefish and Columbia Falls last week in Whitefish at Memorial Field last Friday. The Bulldogs, they took home an 8-0 victory over their, the rival Wildcats. It was a heck of a day for baseball. It was out there, great weather. It feels like that's the sun was shining. It's kind of just baseball weather, you could say. Dive into the recap just a little bit. Whitefish starter Ty Swagger pitched five scoreless innings while striking out 12 and Jacob Columbus fired two shutout innings to close things out for the Bulldogs. Whitefish coach Kyler Blades had this to say about his pitchers on the day. Ty and Jacob just shoved it on the mound. It was a whole lot of fun. Mac McLaughlin set the tone early for the Bulldogs with a leadoff single to right field. McLaughlin stole second and third. Then it came, then came around to score when Columbia Falls catcher Dane Two tried to throw out a stealing swagger, which allowed McLaughlin to burst home and slide safely under the tag to make things one nothing. Quote, Mac McLaughlin got us going, got us charged up as our leadoff hitter, Blades said. Then, Schwagger, he helped his own cause with a sack fly to left field in the third, and at this point, he was dealing on the mound. He was in a groove, had a 1-2-3 fourth, and then the Bulldogs came alive with a four-inning, or four-run fourth inning there. Sorry, bottom half of the fourth there. A little bit of a tongue twister. Anyways, Blades had this to say about the team's hitting on the day. Our hitting is just at the tip of the iceberg. We need to come around and get some more hits overall, but we're happy with this win for sure. All that being said, the first ever Cat Dog Baseball game took place after a tribute and moment of silence for the late Columbia Falls baseball coach, Bill Sapa, who unexpectedly passed away last week. Blades praised Columbia Falls for their willingness to compete during a challenging time. Shout out to Columbia Falls. Reggie Sapa started on the mound. He threw really well, Blades said. It was cool to see them play in this great game because that's what Billy would have wanted. He would have wanted us to be playing, so we appreciate them and the best of luck to them the rest of the season. So that was the end of the recap there. Like Coach Blades mentioned, it was an emotional day for Columbia Falls. A lot of credit to those kids for going out there and playing their hard outs, leaving it all on the field. Nothing but respect to them as competitors, as athletes, and young men. So kudos to them. That's what it's all about. Um, You know, and it was a nice gesture by Whitefish to have a tribute to Coach Sapa and all that. It was just an overall classy day. Like I said, spring weather, one of those days for baseball that just there was something there. All right. Let's move on to some more action on the diamond, but this time we'll get to Cat Dog Softball, which for the first time in quite some time, Cat Dog Softball went down at the varsity level with Whitefish fielding a varsity team again uh, this spring for the first time in, uh, in recent years. Columbia Falls did win that one big. It was 21 nothing, but the point being it was fun to see the rivals out there competing. Columbia Falls head coach Dave Keir was enthusiastic about the opportunity to compete against Whitefish, saying definitely fun for them to have a team, no doubt about it. 
So Columbia Falls definitely had the experienced squad. They were rolling. Demi Renzel hit a three-run home run for the Wildcats. Hayden Peters was three for four at the plate with three runs scored while driving in four more. So overall experience showed on the day, but kudos to the Bulldogs for building that program up. And like Coach Kerr said, Kerr said, it is fun to see that rivalry just have another dynamic to it. I mean, the cat-dog games, football started it out, and then throughout the whole year it's just been awesome. So great stuff. All right, let's keep it going on the softball field with Glacier, who has been off to a great start. So we'll get to the Glacier recap. Last Friday, they swept Butte in a doubleheader. Zoe Allen and Emma Cook hit home runs, and Nakia Persinger packed two home runs in one game to complete the sweep, and that was in the nightcap. The Wolfpack are now 9-0 overall in 8-0 in league games. They batted just twice in the opener, but scored 12 runs in the second inning of the 15-0 win over the Bulldogs. Allen hit a two-home run in that beat. Allen hit a two-run homer in that big inning, excuse me, and then Kaz Ronkowski and pitcher Ella Farrell all both drove in two runs. So in the nightcap, they were playing as the visitors. The Wolfpack got a three-run inside the park home run from Persinger and a two-run shot from Cook in the six, in a six-run fifth inning, excuse me. So in the third, Persinger did it again with a three-run homer to put her squad up 11 nothing. So I'm getting a little over the place with the recap, but Glacier hit a lot of bombs, had a big day, big day from Persinger, big day from Cook, and then Avery Anderson and Rinkowski each were added again in the nightcap. They both had three hits, scored three times, and Anderson and Allen each had two doubles. So Morgan Vivian, she threw a complete game in that one, allowing three hits and a walk in five innings. She fanned two. Farrell threw just three innings in the opener. Both games played at Glacier, ended early under the 10-run rule, and allowed one hit and no walk, striking out five. So Farrell was dealing on the day. Vivian was dealing on the day. Glacier's rolling. Like I said, my recap got a little jumbled there, but, you know, just a little teaser. We might be talking a little more Glacier softball during our prep player of the week. So we'll keep it rolling and see how that one goes. One more piece of prep news here. The Whitefish Arm Invitational was last week for the track and field, and the Whitefish Boys and the Columbia Falls Girls took home victories. Whitefish Boys used depth to win their own Arm Invitational. This recap is from the Interlake last week. So, and that was last Saturday, and the Columbia Falls Wildcats girls, they won the same way with that depth. The Bulldogs boys won four events while piling up 117 points to 99 for second place Big Fork. Haver and Columbia Falls finished third and fourth in the team race for the boys. Then the Wildcats for the girls. They took home that girls title despite the presence of just one event winner at McAllister who took the pole vault trophy on the day. Haver edged Big Fork for third place, and the Whitefish girls, getting a sprint sweep from Brooke Zatoni, were fifth with 60 points. The Whitefish boys had wins from Ethan Amick in the 3200 and Carson Crack in the high jump and 300 hurdles and in the long relay. Crack was also second in the long jump, while Columbia Falls' Jace Duvall finished first. Columbia Falls also, also saw Malachi Simpson run the fastest time in Class A for the 100 meters, winning in 11.04 seconds. So overall fun stuff from the Arm Invitational. Strong showing from the Wildcats girls and the Bulldogs boys, but kudos to all the competitors out there, and I'm sure they are happy to be competing in some good spring weather on the, in the track and field arena right now. All right, let's get to our prep players of the week. Presented by Hagado Media Group Montana. The team in Montana is here to help you grow. Our skilled team will assess your marketing goals and craft ROI-focused campaigns home to meet your business needs. Our integrated marketing solutions will help your people find you wherever they are looking, whether it's Google, YouTube, apps, or your local newspaper. Contact Anton at 406-758-4410 for more information. All right, let's dive into those prep players of the week. First off, we mentioned them already, Ty Schwager of the Whitefish baseball team. Schwager took the mound for Whitefish during the first ever Cat Dog baseball game for his rival Columbia Falls, and he was dealing. He had it cooking from the get-go, mixing in the fastball that's been clocked in the low 90s, and he had great command on his breaking ball, throwing it for strikes throughout the game. In total, he pitched five innings of two hits, shot out baseball while striking out 12 as the Bulldogs took home an 8-0 win in the inaugural Cat Dog baseball showdown. So kudos to Schwager. Just had it going from the get-go on the mound and just from a baseball standpoint, just a smooth delivery, easily repeatable, and can only imagine the kid's going to develop as he grows. So fun to watch. Next up, we mentioned her, Nakia Persinger. She had a huge game, two home runs, eight RBIs in that nightcap for the Wolfpack's doubleheader sweep over Butte. Eight RBIs is a heck of a game. Persinger hit a pair of three-run home runs. She sent the first one over the fence in the third inning for her first homer, and in the fifth, she legged out inside the park. Home run as the Wolfpack cruised to victory. Our last prep player of the week,
selection. It's been a while since we've done this, but we're gonna go with the group nod for the Glacier tennis team as a whole for the boys and girls because they had such a strong showing at the Western AA Tennis Invitational at Flathead Valley Community College last weekend. Glaciers, Harrison Sanders and Timmy Glanville defeated teammates Trey Inglet and Ethan Woods to claim number one doubles title at the Western AA Invitational at FVCC on Saturday, one of several Wolfpack doubles wins. The meet featured 188 matches, and besides Flathead and Glacier, visiting teams included Butte, Helena High, Helena Capital, and Missoula Big Sky. Play stretched from the morning to the late evening. With some matches still in play at 8 p.m. Saturday night. So a long day of tennis, but we got that long days of sunshine back. So that's nice. So another Glacier duo won a doubles title Saturday on the girls' side with Haven Spear and Sarah Downs. They also had to play teammates in the chipper. Spear and Downs top Colette Daniels and Katie Bittany 6-2 for the number one girls' doubles title. Glacier had another winner in Will Rudbach, who defeated Helena Capitals, Ashton Shipley for the number one boys' singles title. Cassidy and Cadence Daniels won another doubles title for Glacier in the number two bracket against teammates Tori Dobis and Claire Enos. Overall, what a strong showing from Glacier with their competitors making up multiple finals matches and seeing a variety of Glacier tennis athletes pick up wins in their bracket from the singles and the doubles ranks. So overall, strong program with Glacier, Coach Josh Monroe, one national tennis coach of the year recently for the whole country, not just the state. So he's a heck of a coach and he has that program headed in the right direction as tennis season really ramps up. I will say as we wrap up this prep player of the week nod, definitely been some great weather for tennis, track, softball, baseball, all these spring sports. It's been, it was like 88 degrees driving to work today. Maybe I almost had to ditch the long sleeve, but that being said, it's been some awesome weather and you love to see it for these prep athletes getting out there and enjoying these last few months of the spring sports really going hard and it's going to be a lot of fun so those were your prep player of the week selections for this week brought to you by Hagado media group montana glacier softball product kinsey mole had a big week last week with her second collegiate home run for the grizz mole hit a two run first inning home run the grizzlies didn't score from there they lost that game but overall you gotta love it to see the glacier high product thriving at the next level the grizzlies on the year they did fall to 10 and 35 they're 4 and 11 in big sky games after hitting just three for 18 with runners on base mole had one of those hits the glacier high product hit her second career homer after kendall curtis hit a two out double mole swung the ball swung the bat well over the weekend going one for four in a rare start saturday after a combined three for four with two rbis while montana split a double header with the wildcats so overall in the season the glacier high product is hitting 250 11 for 44 nine rbis and her 432 slugging percentage and 759 ops ranked first on the team though she has played just 24 of 45 games but awesome stuff from the glacier high product keep it going all right so Little Lady Grizz news. So the transfer portal has been impacting the state of Montana. The Bobcats have some players on the way out. We'll get to that in a second. But the Lady Grizz, they welcome three impact transfers. So signing scholarship offers were Espen McGraw from Iowa State, Emojin Greenslade from Arizona State, and MJ Bruno from Portland. Espen Miller McGraw, an ESPN five-star product. Coming out of high school, so big-time prospect, is a five foot ten shooting guard. She played four years at Iowa State and will have one season to play at Montana. Greenslade is a six foot four center. She played three years at Arizona State, the first of which was in the NCAA's COVID exception. So in 2020-2021, she will have two years of eligibility remaining due to that exception. Bruno, who made an official visit to Montana when she was a prep player at Central Valley High in Spokane, played two years at Portland and will have two more to play for Montana. She is a 5'11 guard. Here's what head coach Brian Holzinger had to say of the recruits. All these kids are excited about our culture and how we do things here. They loved our team when they visited. We had some specific things I felt we needed to address. The sky is the limit for all three of them. They can be good as they want to be. So Coach Holzinger is excited. And just overall, those are some big-time moves for the Lady Grizz, bringing in a former five-star prospect. I try not to get lost in all that too much as far as the stars and this and that. But at the end of the day, you know, talent doesn't lie. If you have that kind of talent as a prep player, that, that you know, you had a good career at Iowa State, the Grizz got a good one. So overall, three key impact recruits on the way in. Our last piece of news we'll mention for the day, on the other end of the spectrum, the Bobcats men's basketball team did lose a trio of very much so impact players from last season. 
with star shooting guard Raekwon Battle heading to West Virginia to play for legendary head coach Bob Huggins. Got to think Battle's trying to elevate his chance to make a name for himself, maybe land in the G League and the NBA or play professionally overseas. I think that's already a lock, though, with that talent. And as far as Big Sky Defensive Player of the Year, Darius Brown, he'll be joining former Bobcats head coach Danny Sprinkle at Utah State along with Big Sky Six Man of the Year, Great Ozbar, who will also be connecting with Coach Sprinkle in Utah at Utah State. So those are some big impact pieces for the Bobcats that are going to be on the way out. They're going to have to really find some impact pieces to replace those guys heading into next season. But I do want to mention that I think this 2022-2023 Bobcats basketball team was special. Yeah, battle, highlight, real performance in the NCAA tournament, putting on show all year long as a scorer. Osbar and Brown both took home Big Sky accolades. They won the Big Sky. They made March Madness. So overall, you got to hold that season in high regard and just kind of turn the page and move it forward to the next chapter of Bobcats basketball because it's here. It's a new era. But that last one was one special that I think Bobcats basketball fans, regardless of how this team does next year, they're always going to hold that team in high regard. And it's going to be one for the record books because it was just a special group. Jabril Bello in his senior year. So there was just a special culmination of talent in Bozeman last season. And it's going to be exciting to see how those players perform in Utah State and battle at West Virginia, who's parentally, you know, a top-tier program. So he'll have a chance to prove himself if the opportunity is there with minutes and all that. So, hey, wishing the best of luck to all of them. And like I said, it was a special era of Bobcats basketball. Had an opportunity to cover March Madness, all that, as far as doing the show, talking a lot of hoops, and it was a ton of fun and Just kind of excited to see where the program goes from there, and we'll kind of keep an eye out for how those former Bobcats do at the next step in their journey. So overall, that's going to do it for today's episode of the Interlake Sports Now. Next week, we'll be back with more sports action in the Valley, mainly prep sports stuff, but always keeping an eye out in the college ranks, seeing if these guys make any more NFL news, any other former Bobcats and Grays sign, any other uh, Montana products. So going to keep an eye out there. But overall, I'm Josh Dugan. Until next week, have a good one, y'all. Today's episode is brought to you by Nomad. Go to the Flathead's best manufacturer. Nomad is a longtime supporter of the local community and sports scene, celebrating 20 years of building great careers and mission-focused custom vehicles. Nomad, a Montana-based company making a global impact. Visit nomadgcs.com for more info. That's nomadgcs.com for more information.